Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. If you are brand new here, my name is Diana Aaron and I'm a watercolor artist and a work from home mom. For today's video, I'm gonna be chatting about how to monetize as an artist. One of my passions in life is to end that starving artist narrative that we so often hear growing up. Today, I really wanted to do this video so that if you are wanting to pursue art or you're curious about it, but you don't want to go broke and you actually wanna make a living, I wanna let you guys know that it's absolutely possible to be an artist or to be creative and monetize from your artistic endeavors. So today I'm gonna to be sharing 10 tips on how you can do that. And I'm gonna be sharing a little bit of the pros and cons of each idea. Some of them might not even have cons, you know, but it really depends on what your style is, what you're looking for, what resonates with you, and what sounds exciting to you. It's not only about money, obviously, when it comes to art, it really should be about for the love of it, like a lot of other creative uh, endeavors, I feel like art is really for people who are passionate about creating and sharing and connecting with other people in a really beautiful and visual and personal way. But of course, you should be paid for your skills, all the hours that you put in, all the things. So let's just dive right into it. If you like this type of video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe and let's just get started. So the first idea is an obvious one, is to create and sell your own artwork. Now this was the very first way that I decided to make money was actually because of a fundraiser. If you guys watched my previous video that you know that I actually started a watercolor calendar so that I can go on a mission trip to Alaska. We were doing a homeless ministry mission trip at my old church. So I really wanted to get myself to Alaska. So I decided to sell watercolor calendars. Had no idea what I was doing, but it ended up kickstarting my art career years later down the line, which is really cool. So I created a shop on Etsy, which is an online platform, a marketplace for small businesses and creators and artisans and stuff like that. It's a really great place to do that. Um, I only stayed on there for under a year and then I transitioned to my own website. Either way, no matter what your platform is, this is a great place to try out what you enjoy creating, uh, what style you have, what people resonate with, and also see what other people are selling that's working as well. I think this is a really great way to get started in monetizing your artwork. By the way, it just started raining, so if you hear something in the background, it's rain. It's really nice, actually very soothing to listen to while I'm filming. Um, but anyway, my tip number two, or idea number two, would be custom designs. Now, this one is a really, really great way to make potentially a lot of money because you're creating a brand new custom design for a specific client. I will say specifically with custom projects and clients, you really, really want to have a contract down. This was actually covered a little bit more in my previous video, which I think is gonna be on this side. Um, it's in the cards, but I'm, I share a little bit more about what you should have in your contracts, but make sure you check that out because once you get started on your custom project, you wanna make sure you have all the rules in writing, including like payment terms, revisions, timeline, all of the things so that you're protected and your client feels safe as well. The great thing about custom projects is that you're not trying to guess what people want because you're literally working with someone to create what they envision, which is really cool. And I also think that it's a great way to learn things like customer service, um, setting your backend systems and stuff like that. I will say it could be a little bit stressful just because working with clients, you know, you're gonna learn a lot of things. You're gonna learn how to work with people, which means there could be potential problems but don't let that stop you. It's only a learning experience and you're gonna learn so much about yourself, what you love to do and what you don't love to do. Again, all of these ideas are gonna be a great stepping stone for you to figure all that out. So just try it out. You never know what could happen. The third idea is freelancing. Now this is very similar to my previous idea, but freelancing, you can actually do it under a, another brand as well. So for example, if you wanted to create graphics for a baby clothing line and you know that every single month they need four graphics to post on their social media, then you are basically contracted under that brand. You don't need to worry about 
you know, marketing and selling your own design, but you are helping support that business or that small brand or whatever. So that's pretty cool because they already have certain guidelines for you to follow. You know what you are trying to convey through this graphic. And of course you can do that with your own business as well, your own art style. But if you are in a pinch and you're like, I really don't know exactly what I wanna do with my own style in my own shop, then freelancing is a really great way to gain knowledge and experience while working under someone and getting paid for it. So I highly recommend freelancing. You can even do both at the same time. I would actually recommend doing that, especially if you're in school right now, if you're a college student, this is a really, really great way to learn the business side of freelancing and art and things like that. So I would highly recommend reaching out to a brand that you like, or maybe even a friend and you know, you could even create a sample work for them and see if that's something that you enjoy and you know, help you pay through some of those, you know, college tuition or art supplies and things like that. It's definitely going to be a good way to monetize your artwork. Now on the reverse side of things, my tip number four is creating digital downloads. Now with digital downloads, it's different than freelancing because you're creating something for the mass market rather than under a specific brand. Um, and therefore you have to create designs that basically anyone can use. Well, not anyone, you still wanna have some sort of a target audience, but it's a little bit more widely or commonly used. So you can have phrases like, coffee first, I don't know. You know, something specific that, that you know that people can use over and over again, if that makes sense, not so personal or so custom. And you can actually, you know, create a digital download, sell it over and over and over again, even though you created it once. You can do this through platforms like Creative Market. You could also do this on Etsy as well. You can also have your own website, but I do think that specifically with digital downloads, it is actually more beneficial to use a larger platform, a larger marketplace like Creative Market and different platforms like that because you are basically a part of a search engine. Like people are already typing, you know, wedding invitation design or calligraphy or whatever, and your design will be one of the many that pop up. The con is that you might be, you know, marketing your, your products a little bit more on your social media versus, you know, working with a one-on-one -on -one client and you are going to be competing with many other digital downloads out there. So again, this could be a great, side income stream eventually you will if you enjoy doing that style and you find success with it then you create more based on your market research what's working for you and things like that but this is a really great way to make money with creating just one artwork very very passive now my fifth idea is licensing your designs this is kind of similar to the digital download idea except that you are basically renting out your designs for a certain percentage now i will say licensing is very new for me i'm actually a part of two uh, online courses right now on licensing so i'm really excited to learn a little bit more and share with you guys i actually have some potential projects where i'm going to be doing licensing for other brands and stuff like that so i will be sharing a little bit more along the way but basically what licensing means is that you create a design and a manufacturer or a brand or a company is using that design and printing it on their own products to sell. So you can do this by a certain percentage profit split or have them buy it outright or a little bit of both. They pay you a upfront fee and then you get a certain percentage on sales after that. There's so many different ways to do it. And again, because I'm very new, I don't wanna to give too many advice on this, but I do think there's a huge potential with licensing because truly the possibilities are endless and it's so cool to know that your designs are printed on something that someone will eventually buy so you are literally making your artwork come to life, which is so exciting. Like I can't imagine anyone not being excited by that idea. Now idea number six is content. Now this is really exciting because again, going back to that starving artist narrative, like a lot of people thought that because they didn't see a ton of artists out there creating content for other big brands and stuff like that. So I'm gonna give one example of content creating for artists. So I worked with a really big brand. Let's just say that they're probably the most famous coffee brand out there in the world. And they reached out to me to create some content for an upcoming launch that they were doing for their new coffee line. So I created, um, I believe about four posts for them and it was in the 
five figure range. So definitely great monetization, great financial gain for me as an artist. And it was so much fun to create content for a brand that I truly love, you know, and have supported for years and years and years. So I do feel like content creating is a really good way. I will say though, content creating may not be the most consistent way of bringing in money every single month, if especially starting out. So this could be one of the income streams that you add on to monetizing your artwork. Um, but I do think it's super exciting and super fun. You can also create content for fun by yourself and hope that that brand is going to repost them, or you could reach out to brands to do maybe a social media trade where you create a piece of content for them and they repost it if they have a big following and you want to grow your social media following that could be an idea there but either way there is a huge need for brands out there who want to partner with local artists or who are looking for a specific type of style and they just want a one-time contractor to come in and create that design for them this is where you step in and it's so much fun and there's definitely a lot of potential to make money in that way so my next idea is teaching. So teaching what you know to other people is a great way to honestly talk about something that you're passionate about, something you enjoy while giving back to other people. Tip number seven is to host in-person workshops. Now this is the way I started out and basically what I did was I already had a local following that I built on Instagram. So I partnered with a local brick and mortar shop. Um, we started marketing it, promoting it, and ended up selling out. And I will say it was a little bit intimidating at first to, you know, teach someone. I felt imposter syndrome and I felt nervous. But when I got there, I realized, wow, like it doesn't matter if you're evenly like one or two steps ahead. Like that person will learn so much from you. And seeing that and witnessing that in person really gave me the confidence and excitement to do more, more workshops again and again, especially knowing like what a great need there was. And I know it's not just small brick and mortar shops, but also big brands as well. I've had, you know, workshops at Anthropology, at West Elm, at uh, Madewell and things like that. So you can definitely reach out to your local store if any of those resonate with you and just ask them, hey, I'd love to host a workshop in your store. And you could even say stuff like, you know, to get more traffic in the door for people. They can, you could even ask like, could I offer, you know, a 10% discount? to your shop if they come attend the workshop so that there's more incentive for people to walk into that store. So you're helping that store as much as they are helping you, which is a great way. Now, I know that not everywhere in the world is opened up right now. So if that is you, then you could also do online workshops as well. Um, you could do it via Zoom or YouTube or Instagram, uh, just to gather data, Facebook Live. There's a ton of ways to do this. You could even do pre-recorded uh, workshops as well and sell those tickets as well. If you don't want to deal with all of the hassle of uh, setting up the tech and stuff like that, there is a platform called Skillshare where you can upload your own teaching curriculum and have Skillshare kind of market that for you, just like Etsy or Creative Market. Or if you are up for creating all of the things, your sales page, the marketing, all of that stuff, you can set it up on your own website and have it be either a open and closed type of enrollment or open evergreen, depending on what you are wanting. For me, I have a watercolor portrait course inside my website. I don't have it up in a public page on my website but I do have a workshop that people can watch for free. If you're interested in learning all tips on watercolor and things like that, you could check it out at thewatercolorcourse.com. But anyone who watches that video, that free workshop will get an invitation to join the watercolor portrait course if they want to further their education on watercolor portraits. So there are two different ways that you can do that, uh, whether it's an in-person workshop or an online course. My ninth idea is with murals and creating signages for businesses. I know that stores like Trader Joe's and Whole Foods and lots of restaurants are looking for, you know, chalk artists or people who do calligraphy and lettering to create signs for their store. So you can always reach out to the manager. You can literally walk in and ask them if you want. One of my first projects that I got paid for was doing a, like a menu signage that I did with chalk at a sushi restaurant. So that was really cool because I got to come in. I think they paid me just like $50, which wasn't a lot, but I was, you know, 18 years old and I was like, this is so exciting. So that was really cool to, you know, do something that I enjoyed. And then it was up on their restaurant where people can see it and things like that. 
So that's a great way to make some cash and get started. If you're looking to do something bigger on a larger scale, like a mural, you can even create mock-ups on Photoshop. So you can show people what ideas that you have um, and just post it on social media, you know, use some hashtags to get your work out there, pin it on Pinterest, put it on Tumblr, all the things, and just show people what you are able to do if they were to hire you. That's a really great way to show people what you're capable of and create content as well. My 10th and final idea is to do live art, whether that is live painting or live calligraphy. I feel like a lot of people are interested in watching the process of your painting or your design come to life. And there's something magical about seeing that in person. So for me, I started off um, doing live art for a brand called Janie and Jack. They were throwing a summer collection launch for their baby bathing suits and stuff like that. They had um, an event that they were throwing for their highest paid clientels and celebrities and things like that. So I got to go and paint portraits for people so that they could take home a personalized portrait of themselves. And so this is how my live art got started was through a corporate brand, but eventually I ended up doing small private events like weddings, birthday parties, um, bridal showers, as well as corporate events, conferences, um, and lots of different events. There's so many opportunities out there right now because live art is so hot. If you are a calligrapher, I know that there are a ton of brands looking for live calligraphy services. Similar to what I mentioned earlier with the in-person workshops, basically having that live artist at the storefront really helps bring in traffic as well as provide a personalized touch to their customers. So it only adds value to these big companies. So you could definitely reach out and give them a little, you know, sample of your work and just say, I would love to, you know, partner with you the next time you have a holiday event or some sort of a promotion to get people in the door. So you can definitely get started with live art events by reaching out to some of those bigger companies as well. So those were my 10 tips. I hope you guys got inspired, got some ideas. Let me know down below if you have tried any of these ideas or if you haven't, which one you will try. I know I gave you 10, which feels like a lot, but just try one or a few and see what sticks. Like you never know what you're gonna end up enjoying or not enjoying, what's gonna actually help drive traffic, um, create services, all of those things, so that you can build that art career and monetize from your creative skills. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions for me or any video ideas, I would love to hear from you. I read all the comments, so just leave it down below and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.